Good morning, St. James family and friends. These are our announcements for the upcoming weeks. The St. James Food Pantry is open. If you are in need, or if you know anyone in need, please come to the St. James Food Pantry, which is open every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and is located at 9255 South Perry Avenue. Masks are required for entry. On the first and third Wednesday of every month, the St. James Clothing Ministry is open from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you are in need or know of someone in need of free clothing, please come to the Clothing Ministry located at 9255 South Perry Avenue. Masks are required for entry. Start your morning with prayer. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time, you can call in and join our prayer ministry for prayer. Sunday School is moving to a new time and will now be both in-person and virtual. Join us on Sundays before the worship service at 9.15 a.m. Central Standard Time for our Adult Sunday School. For those who will be joining virtually, you can join us through the Zoom link on our website. Midweek Meetup, our virtual Wednesday night Bible study and fellowship, meets every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can join us every Wednesday through our website for prayer, Bible study, and fellowship. Are you interested in becoming a member of St. James AME Chicago? Please email us at info at stjamesamechicago.com. You can also fill out a form on our website. St. James is a place where you can learn and grow in your gifts. We are looking for individuals to join our media team. If you are interested in social media engagement, or operating a camera, we are looking for you. No experience is required as we will provide the necessary training. If you are over the age of 14 years old, then you are welcome to join the team. If you are interested, please email us at info at stjamesamechicago.com for more information. The youth ministry continues their sock drive. Please support our youth by donating pairs of children's socks at an upcoming in-person service. These socks will be given to a local homeless shelter. Welcome home. Join us for in-person worship on every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Mask and temperature checks will still be required. We will continue to have virtual worship every Sunday on YouTube, Facebook, and our website. We look forward to seeing you. Remember to go to our website at stjamesamechicago.com to sign up for our email list to receive upcoming updates on our ministry, events, and future in-person worship services. Subscribe to our social media channels on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube to stay connected. Now, let us go into worship.
Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Oh, be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. We are so grateful that you have decided to worship with us this morning here at St. James in this virtual space. We ask that you like and share this broadcast and give someone a call and let them know that you are worshiping with St. James. Now let us join in worship with the voices of Levi. We've come to worship him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or even think. We've come to worship and magnify the Lord. We have come into this house. Gathered in his name. To worship him. We have come. We have come into this house. Gathered in his name. To worship him. We have come. We have come into this house. Worship him, Christ the Lord. We have gathered in his name to worship him. We have come, we have come into this house, gathered in his name. Oh, oh. 
to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you on this second on this second Sunday of Easter for resurrection power and the grace to get up again. Lord, on this second Sunday of Easter, we recognize that you did the impossible when you brought your son, Jesus Christ, back from the dead. And remind us that nothing is impossible. That's why we praise you. That's why we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, for you are worthy of all of it. God, on this day, we first come confessing our sins. We confess that we have not always done what you have called us to do, and we have not always lived in the way that you have called us to live. We have fallen short of your glory, and yet your property is always to have mercy. And so, God, we confess that we need mercy today. We need your help to live the way that we need to. God, we need you every hour to be a very present help in time of trouble and to show us the way that leads to life. God, we thank you. We thank you for your saving grace. We thank you for your ever-present mercy. We thank you, God, that you never left us alone. And now, God, we ask that you will be a very present help. Lord, we lift up the sick today. We lift up those who are living in fear because so much is going on in this world. We, we pray for those that are overwhelmed by all of the nonsense that permeates our lives from day to day. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling struggling to make it, struggling to make ends meet, struggling to find solace in the midst of the craziness. God, we know that life can be difficult and life as of late has been very difficult, but God, you promise never to leave us alone. And so we pray that you will hear every prayer that is prayed today those who lift their petitions out loud and those that are buried deep in our hearts, God, we ask that you hear them all. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, for you are worthy to be praised. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So amazing. 
come on and let's praise the Lord together. For Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. We are so grateful to have you with us on this second Sunday in the season of the resurrection. And we are excited about the word of God that is uh, forthcoming. But there is a word from the Lord. And as we continue in our series of Easter sermons reflecting on the resurrection. Last Sunday, we looked at the women at the tomb, and today we will continue in that post-resurrection story. From the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, we invite you to consider verses 9 through 12, Luke chapter 24, verses 9 through 12. Listen for the word of the Lord. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we are not worthy that you should come under this roof. Speak the words and your servants will be healed. Heal us with your resurrection power. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said amen. Luke chapter 24, verse 11. They did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. And I want to use this as a subject with which to preach this morning. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. The story of Jesus doesn't make sense. It's full of contradictions, twists, and turns that can leave any of us confused. Hear me out. A king who is even called king of kings and lord of lords was born in a barn on the wrong side of the tracks in Nazareth doesn't make any sense. An innocent man is tried, convicted, and executed in the most cruel way possible, like he was an enemy of the state. That doesn't make any sense. This man, Jesus, was dead. Everybody saw him die. Everybody saw the soldier pierce his side. Everybody saw Joseph of Arimathea take him down from the cross, wrap him up, and place Jesus in the tomb and somehow roll a stone in front of the tomb. But now his body is missing. Doesn't make sense. It's pure and utter nonsense. It's unbelievable. It's crazy talk. Can somebody help me make this make sense? That was the reaction of the disciples when the women returned to, from the tomb. What are you are saying can't be real. It can't be true. If last week the women had an issue with remembering, Today, the men are have an issue with believing. 
And yet the only way the resurrection of Jesus Christ can make any sense at all is through belief. It's not through physical evidence. And I know there are sites in the Holy Land that identify this place or that place as the place where something in the birth, life, or death of Jesus Christ occurred, but, but the truth of the matter is that most of those places were identified off of pure speculation. Physical evidence won't make it make sense. Eyewitness testimony is clearly insufficient. The Bible says the disciples did not believe the women, and they were the first people in Jesus' circle to discover that the tomb was empty and in encountered a rather snarky pair of angels asking rhetorical questions. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Maybe because they were women. And, you know, this was an era when misogyny was very real. Or, or, or maybe the disciples were blinded by their own experience of the trauma of Good Friday. But, but eyewitness testimony could not make the resurrection makes sense. If neither physical evidence nor eyewitness testimony could make it make sense, the only thing left is faith. And when we are dealing with the big, bold, audacious moves of God in our text for this morning and in our individual lives, faith is the only thing that can help us make sense of what God is doing. Because, as Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 21, God can use the foolish things, amen, to bless us. Do I have a witness? Paul says, where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God for for since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what we preached to save those who believe. Faith, trust, belief is what is necessary to make the truth of the resurrection live in the lives of those who follow our resurrected Savior. But, but here's the problem this morning. Today, we live in a world where it is difficult to decipher truth from lies. Amen. Right from wrong. We live in an era of viral misinformation. To quote a recent article I read in The Atlantic entitled, Why the Last Ten Years of American Life Have Been Uniquely Stupid. We live in a social media curated alternate reality which has made trusting what we hear and what we read and what people in authority tell us difficult to accept. And so the question on this second Sunday of Easter, in Easter we're in, just like our text, fear and doubt loom large in the contextual background. The question is this, how do I make sense of the reality of the resurrection when all I hear and all I have access to and all I know is nonsense? Well, to answer that question, we turn to the, that iconic disciple and apostle Peter. His response to the women's testimony might provide a rubric, a roadmap, if you will, that leads us to faith and to making sense of the resurrection. And, and let me say this before I continue. Everybody has their own faith journey. Everybody doesn't get there at the same time in the same way. But Peter might just be able to help us make this whole resurrection issue make sense. And to make the resurrection make sense, it would behoove us to pay attention to the verbs in our text for this morning. I've said it many times in many sermons. God moves 
in mighty ways through the verbs. The text says that the women came back from the tomb and reported to the disciples and the others present in the locked room that Jesus wasn't in the tomb anymore and that Jesus was indeed alive. And we know how the majority of the disciples reacted. They, they answered the women's testimony with doubt and disbelief. And there are probably very legitimate reasons for their disbelief. Suffice it to say that they rejected the women's testimony and told them that they were talking nonsense. But Peter responded different. The Bible says that on hearing the women's report, Peter doesn't say a word, but gets up and runs to the tomb. Everybody else was content in their disbelief and in their dismissal of the women's story. And if truth is told this morning, and I intend to tell the truth and shame the devil, some of us are content in our low expectations of God. I've talked a little bit about this last Sunday. Nobody in this story actually expected Jesus to get up out that grave. He, he said he was going to happen, but, but the women went to the tomb early on Sunday morning to see a body in that tomb. And, and the disciples, even they, did not expect to hear the news that Jesus was alive. And, and my brothers and sisters, I stopped by to admonish all of us to work on our spiritual expectations. We serve a God who is for whom impossible is not an option. In fact, we serve a God, according to Reverend James Cleveland, who specializes in things that are impossible. Have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Have you any mountains that you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in things thought impossible, and God can do what no other power but Holy Ghost power can do. Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Why? Because the resurrection will always make you run. Amen. It'll make you curious. Peter wanted to see the empty tomb for himself. He wanted to see the miracle for himself. He wanted to witness the change that this event had wrought in human history for himself. And beloved, at some point you have to have your own encounter with resurrection. The, the seasoned saints said it this way, you have to know Jesus for yourself. The, woman, the women can testify till the cows come home and, and that testimony was necessary. But at some point, we have to take ownership of our faith development. I remember when I was a kid, we were uh, in a fifth district YPD meeting and Bishop John Richard Bryant and Reverend Cecilia Williams Bryant were talking about discipleship. And, and at the end of the talk, amen, they, they encouraged all of the youth on, on the next Sunday they were in church after the sermon was preached and during the invitation, every child was encouraged to go down the aisle and make a public confession of faith. Because in order to grow spiritually, one must take ownership of your faith development. Mom's faith can't save you. Have I got any company in the cyber sanctuary? Dad's faith can't save you. Every, every time someone's life was changed by Jesus Christ, what did Jesus say to them? You, you, you've heard him say it several times. Your faith has made you well. Woman with an issue of blood, your faith has healed you. Syrophoenician woman, your faith faith, not somebody else's. Your faith is to be admired and emulated in all of Israel. Stop piggybacking off of somebody else's experience and get one for yourself. Keep running in God's directions and things will start to make sense. What else did Peter do to make sense of the resurrection? Well, we know he ran to the tomb. He was curious. He wanted to have an experience for himself. And when he got there, 
When he got to the opening of the tomb, he, he also was able to visualize God's promises. He, he, he ran to the tomb, and, and when he got there to the opening of the tomb, and, and we got to acknowledge that that stone had been rolled away, God will move some obstacles out of your way. Do I have a witness in the cyber sanctuary? The Bible says that when he got to the tomb, the tomb was open, and the Bible says that Peter bent over. King James says he stooped down suggesting that the burial chamber must have been deep underground. He, he got a deeper look, amen. It wasn't enough to see the stone rolled away. Peter had to go in, and, and sometimes faith is developed when you take a deep dive into the things of God. Too many want to stay at the surface, amen. We are content just coming to church, but we won't mess with Bible study, amen. We, we, we are all right with giving and offering, but we won't trust God with our full tithe, but, but beloved, real discipleship, uh, real disciples are not satisfied with the surface level stuff. Peter stooped down into the inner parts of the resurrection chamber and looked around and he observed what was going on. He, he observed that the burial clothes were laid by themselves. Brother Preacher, what is the significance that Peter stooped down and saw discarded grain Clothes. And my answer is this, he, what he saw uh, is actually not as important as what he didn't see. And what he didn't see was Jesus laying in that burial chamber, which validates everything that Jesus had told them early on and, and confirmed every promise that Jesus had ever made. And I know I made this point last week, but it, I feel compelled to state it again with even more emphasis. God's word is true and can be trusted. God is not a God that he would lie. God, if God spoke it, it is done. Do I have a witness in the cyber sanctuary? If God says it, that settles it. If God said, by his stripes, I am healed, that settles it. I, if, if he said I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that settles it. If God said that he shall supply all of my needs according to his glorious riches, I'm not worried about the bill collector on my phone. I, he, he, if he said it, that settles it. If God says my latter days will be greater than my former days, that settles it. Peter saw with his own eyes that God keeps God's promises. And I'm standing on the promises Christ my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. I'm, I am standing on the promises of God my Savior, making sense of the resurrection. Requires that you run for your life. Move with haste to the place where you can have your own encounter with resurrection. Making sense of the resurrection additionally requires that we visualize God's promises and stand on those in promises until we see them come to pass. Finally, I'll bid you good morning with this. Making sense of the resurrection requires that you and I be open to wonder. Peter ran to the tomb, saw the grave clothes lying there by themselves. Then the Bible says that Peter went back to Jerusalem, wondering what had happened. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Peter is in the same space mentally, physically, spiritually that he was before he left for the, for the cemetery. He's still confused, still doubtful, still not convinced. 
And maybe you're right. Maybe Peter is still confused. Maybe Peter is still doubtful. Maybe he is still, he remains unconvinced. But can I suggest that Peter's doubt and confusion are really okay? Because at the very least, he's thinking about the possibilities. At the very least, the idea of a resurrected Jesus has Peter wondering. And that's a good place to be. It's a good place to be in a state of wonderment because Jesus is wonderful. And when we are confronted with the reality that God is wonderful, when we face the enormity of God's power, when we have to fathom all the profound mysteries of who God is and what God has done, it, it will leave you scratching your head. It will sometimes leave you with more questions than you have answers for. It will leave you wondering, how did that happen? How did I make it through that? How was I able to pay off that bill? How, how was I able to come back from that disappointment? How was I able to survive that breakdown? How was I able, how am I still here after all of that? My soul looked back in wonder how I got over. And, and if truth is told, my brothers and sisters, the resurrection won't make any sense until we are able to wonder. Amen. Wonder leads to worship, and, and worship is the ground of faith. And Peter went home wondering what had happened, which, which means that God had just blown Peter's mind, and I wonder, is there anybody in the cyber sanctuary who has ever had God to blow their mind? You, you can't explain it, but you know God did it. You, you, you can't articulate what happened, but, but you know God did it. Uh, and, and when you know that at the end of your question is the God of the universe, when uh, making something as inexplicable and miraculous and wonderful as the resurrection makes sense, making something as inexplicable and miraculous and wondrous as a resurrection makes sense, because making that make sense becomes less of a priority and instead you just start trying to live your life to the fullest of your potential because you know who holds your future. I'm closing when I tell you the story of another man who had experienced all types of trauma. He was a preacher and a singer and a songwriter and he found great success in the work that he was doing for the Lord. And eventually this preacher and singer got married and for a while things were fine. They, the, the, the couple actually were able to minister together and they built a wonderful ministry together. But ultimately things made a, took a turn for the worse. The, the marriage fell apart. The man and woman got divorced and eventually the preacher's ex-wife died in a tragic car accident. And my brothers and sisters, this preacher was devastated. He, he was depressed. He was, he was broken and, and wondered if he could ever be put back together again. And, and one day while driving in his car, God spoke to this preacher. God spoke to Iris Stanfield and encouraged his heart with these words, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry or the future, for I know what Jesus said, and today I walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. And this is the part that I like. Many things I, about tomorrow I don't seem 
to understand. There's a whole bunch about God that I don't understand. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I've been through that I can't make sense of, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Peter went back to Jerusalem, confused but holding on to God's unchanging hand, afraid but holding on to God's hand. He lacked the understanding, but nevertheless, he was holding to God's hand. God is a mystery sometimes, but but if you hold to his hand, you'll never go astray. If, if you hold to his hand, he'll never leave you alone. If you hold to God's hand, he'll walk with you and he'll talk with you and he'll tell you that you belong to him. If you hold to God's hand, he'll make your path straight. Do I have a witness in the cyber side? If you hold to his hand, after a while, you'll understand that you've been often tossed and driven by the restless sea of time, somber skies and howling tempests of succeed, a bright sunshine, but in that land of perfect day that when the mists have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, and I'm here to tell you that the morning will come. All the saints of God will gather home, and we all, not just the women, not just the disciples, but we all will be able to tell the story of how we overcome and will understand it better by and by. Make it make sense. But until it makes sense, hold on to God's hand and we'll understand it better. In the name of Jesus, the people of God said amen. Doors of the church are open. And if you are like these disciples, you're trying to make sense of all of this, I want to tell you that if you hold on to God's hand, it might not make sense right now, but it will. You'll understand it better by and by. You'll understand why you've had to go through some of the things that you've gone through. You, you'll understand why your, your journey has gone in the direction it has gone in. You'll understand that God is at every turn and at every corner and that God is behind every move that we make. And so this morning, if you're here and you're ready to let God be God in your life, I want to invite you to do one of two things or both. First, I want you to get saved. I want you to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. How do I do that, Pastor? The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe, believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. You'll be a Christian. You'll be a disciple. The other invitation is for those of you who need a church home where you can grow in your faith. I want to invite you to become a part of the faith family here at St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church in Chicago. It doesn't matter where you are, you can be anywhere and still be a part of this family. Just go to our website, stjamesamechicago.com slash virtual church. You can either press that salvation button or press a church that church membership button. Or, and we will reach out to you. We look forward to walking with you. Won't you pray with me? God, in Jesus' name, I, I know that I feel sometimes like Peter or like some of the other disciples. I, I don't know what to believe. Everything sounds like nonsense. But the one thing that I know for sure is that you are the God of the universe and, and that you sent your son to save us all from our sins. And so God, on this day, on this second Sunday in the season of the resurrection, I want my life 
I want to be resurrected. I want my faith to be renewed. I want my hope to be restored. And I want to do that by making a confession, my, my confession, by becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so God, I simply ask that you come into my heart, that you help me to move in the direction that leads to life. God, I believe that you are, that you sent Jesus Christ to save me from my sin. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead in victory and, and in his rising, you destroyed our death. God, I'm ready to make a commitment. In Jesus' name, receive my commitment today. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to go quickly as you can, like Peter ran to the tomb. I want you to go as quickly as you can to our website, stjamesamechicago.com. Press that salvation button. Press that membership button. Make a commitment to God and to God's church today. And we will walk alongside you on this faith journey. May God bless you and may God keep you as we grow in our understanding and in our faith. Amen. Good morning, St. James. Praise the Lord. This is a portion where we all have a part to play. It's offering time. We have three ways you can give at St. James. You can go online to www.stjamesamechicago.com or you can go to PayPal or give GiveLafi. Or you can send your gift and offering to St. James AME Church at 9256 South Lafayette Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. Let us pray for the offering. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that you have poured upon us. Father, as we bring Father this token of love, O oh God, we pray, gracious and mighty God, it will, it, will, it will be used to the blessing and to the growing of your church, Father, in evangelism and in teaching of your word. We thank you, Father, that every hand that dipped into their pocket and gave what they had, Father, you will bless them. For those who were not able to do, Father, we pray, O oh, gracious and mighty God, you will pour your blessing upon them also. Lord, we thank you for the gifts. We thank you for the blessings, Father, and we thank you most of all, Father, for the good health and the good life you have given us. We ask all this, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. To God be the glory for our praise and worship service today. We thank you for worshiping alongside us on this Sunday morning. And if you have heard the word and would like to give your life to Christ or to join us here at St. James, we invite you to go to our website, stjamesamychicago.com, where you can fill out a salvation form or a membership form. And someone from our ministry team will be happy to reach out to you and connect with you to help guide you on your faith journey. And we invite you here every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time where you can join us both on YouTube and also Facebook. And now let us have our benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord's face turns towards you and give you peace hence now and forevermore and let us all say amen go in peace to love and to serve the lord Amen.